Have you ever wondered how FIFA manages to track every goal, card and substitution across hundreds of matches without the data falling apart? In this video, I'll walk you through a database design for a World Cup style tournament. It works for football, but it also works for rugby, cricket or any sport with teams competing in a structured tournament. By the end, you'll know how to design a tournament database that can handle complex real-world data, from group stages to finals and adapt it to any sport. And if you want the full database guide for this video, including the ERD and table explanations, you can find it in the link in the description. Here is the website for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. We'll use this event as we have completed matches and the 2026 event hasn't happened yet at the time of recording. There are a lot of news articles on the main page here, but we want to get to the underlying data. Let's start with teams. We can see a list of all the teams here. These are all of the teams that competed in the tournament. It looks like they each have a name, a shorter name, and a flag. We can use this as a starting point for our database. Let's start with the design. I'm using a tool called DB Diagram, but you can use whatever tool you like. We'll add a table for team and give it an ID for the primary key. We store the name, such as Argentina, and the short name, such as ARG. We'll also add a column to store the team logo, which in this example is the country's flag. We'll call it logo to keep it more generic, as there may be teams that don't have flags as their logo. This column would be a text value and stores the URL to an image file somewhere on the server. The website would read this and then find the file to display. I've also added both a created at and updated at column to capture when the record was created and when it was updated. This can be helpful for debugging issues or tracing how and when data is updated. So that's how we store a team in the database. Let's see what else is available on the website. Back on the tournament website, we'll click on a team to see what it captures. And what better team to click on than Argentina, the tournament winners. There is a lot shown on this page. We have some news about the team, and then some team stats, some videos, and then some highlights, and then the squad. There's a lot of things here to capture. Back on the top of the page, there are some other tabs we can click on. On the Fixtures tab, we can see a list of the matches that Argentina played, along with the results. On the Stats tab, we can see a range of stats about the team overall, such as the number of matches and cards. We should aim to calculate this later with our design. Next, we click on Squad. And we can see a list of players in the team. We'll also capture this in the database. Let's go back to fixtures and try to capture the matches played for the team, which is a pretty central concept to the database. We have all the matches for this team here. We can scroll to the right and see the earlier matches. Let's show their first match, Argentina versus Saudi Arabia. We see the match between these two teams. There's a lot shown here. We have this label at the top, Group C Match 8. We have the full names of the teams, their logos, and the final score of the match. On the right, we have the date and time the match was played. We've also got the events for each team here, the name of the tournament and where it was played. There's much more on this page, but we'll take it slowly and expand our diagram with what we see here about the match. We should add a table to store this match data. We add this match table, which has a primary key. We add two columns for the teams that are playing in the match. I've called them Team 1 and Team 2, as it's probably incorrect to call them Home Team and Away Team. The played date time column will store the date and time that the match is played in or scheduled for. This would ideally capture the time zone as well, and I recommend storing time zones in UTC and then converting for display. We have the scores of both teams, which would be empty for future games but populated for completed games. Finally, we have the created and updated dates. What about the location or the stadium where the match was played? We saw this on the page. A good way to store this is to create a lookup table of all available stadiums, then link it to the match table. Let's do this. For the stadium, we capture the primary key as well as a name. We could capture a lot more for the stadium, such as the city or capacity, but this is all we need for now. We link this to the match table by adding a foreign key to this table from the match table. Back on the match web page, we see in the summary there are entries for players who have scored a goal. It shows the players and when they scored. We'll come back to this soon. Also on this page, we have the group and match, which we can see on the top left. Let's add this now as I think it's fairly simple. For the match number, we can assume it's a sequential number to identify the match on various pages. We'll add this column to the match table. 
We won't use the primary key as the match number because I believe the primary key shouldn't be visible anywhere. It's purely used by the database to link and identify records. If we want to change the match number that's shown on the page to something else, we can do that much easier than changing the ID primary key. So we add this column to the match table. Let's add the concept of a group. A team belongs to a group for the tournament and there can be many groups. So we add a new table called Team Group. I've avoided calling it group because that's a reserved word in SQL and could cause issues. This has an ID as well as a group name. How do we link this to the other tables? We could link it to match. However, I think it's better to link it to a team so we can show the group standings for each of the teams. We can determine the group of the match from the related teams. So we add a group ID to the team table. That should be all we need for groups. We can come back later if we need to. We can scroll down further on this page and see a lot of different stats for the match. Things like possession time, assists, shots on goal, and a bunch of other things that I'm sure football fans would know about that I don't. This seems like a lot to capture. However, it looks like this could just be a list of different statistics, and then a number captured for each team for each match. We could add this into the match table, but it's more flexible to add a separate table for this. We can add one table for the different stats that could be shown, then another table to capture the value of each stat for each team. Let's do that now. The first table will be called Available Stat and will store the different stats that are available for a match. This has an ID as well as a name. I think that's all we need for this. The second table will link each of these available stats to the team for a match. We'll call this match stat. This has an ID, a match ID, a team ID that it relates to, and a stat ID that captures the stat. A record in this table would capture the fact that Argentina had 65% time in possession in match 1, for example. We should now be able to capture the match stats for both teams and display them on the page. Back on the page, after these stats, we see this head-to-head -head section. This seems to show a history of matches between the teams. If we capture matches already, we should be able to display this section if we need to. So there's nothing else to add for this. Next we have the form section. This is also based on previous matches which we've already captured. The player stats shows a list of players, their photo and the number of particular stat they have achieved. We don't have this yet in our database. It looks like we need to capture players and some information about them, and then we capture some different types of stats. We should capture these separately to the other stats because these are player level stats and the others were team level stats. Let's do that now. First we'll add a player table. We'll capture the ID, the player name, the team they play for and a URL for their profile photo. Next we add a table for those available stats. We already have a table for available stats and we're adding a second one, so I think it's a good idea to rename that existing table to make it clear we have a team stat table and a player stat table. We'll just capture the ID and a name in this table. Now we can link this to players and matches in a new table we will call player stat. We have an ID and links to the available player stat table, the match table and the player table. We then capture the actual value of the stat. This will allow us to specify that Nicholas Otamendi has 85 passes in this match, for example. What else do we need? We've reached the end of this page, so we'll scroll back to the top. We won't capture the live blog feature in our database, so we can ignore that. We've done the stats tab already. Let's look at lineup. This tab shows both teams and the formation they have chosen, such as 442 or 433. It also shows the starting lineup, which is a list of each player that it started, along with their position and shirt number. We then scroll down to see substitutions, which look to be bench players. The list also shows who scored goals, who got cards, and who was substituted. We'll come back to this soon. First, we capture the formation. This is chosen for each team for each match. We'll capture this in the match table for each team. We'll add two columns for this, one for each team. Next, we need to enhance our player table. We have the names and teams, but we don't have the shirt numbers or positions. We can add the shirt number to the player table pretty easily. Now we can add the positions. There seems to be only a few different positions, so let's add them as a lookup table. We capture the ID and a name. 
Next, we can link this to the player table using a foreign key. Finally, we have players and positions, but how do we capture who started for a match and who was substituted? This could change with each match. We can do this by adding a joining table between player and match. We'll capture the match ID and the player ID for each combination of player and match. We'll also add a column called is starter. This is a boolean column to capture if the player was a starter or a sub. This table does create a bit of a circle reference, with two ways for a player to be linked to a match. But I think it's okay and a valid way to represent the business rules. We should now be able to show what we need for the player lineups on that page. One thing this page shows is substitutions, which is when a player on the field gets swapped with a player on the bench. We can capture this in our database in a new table to record who and when the substitution was made. We can then show this data on the page here. We store the match ID so we know what match it is for. We capture the player who was subbed off and the player who came on in two separate columns. We also capture this match minute column, which is the number of minutes into the game the substitution happened. We could capture this as a time, which might be better, but we only need the minute number, so maybe this is okay for us. We don't need to capture the team ID in this table, as we can infer this from the player's relationship. We just captured substitutions in the database. Another thing shown on this page is players that score goals. This was also shown on the summary at the top of the stats tab, the part we said we would return to later. Well, here we are. We want to capture the goals for players in a match. We would create a new table similar to substitutions. This has the match ID, the player that scored the goal, and the minute that the goal happened in. We also have an indicator for is penalty, to show whether the goal happened during the penalty period. Now, this is similar to a substitution, but only for one player. Do we combine the tables? We could by having a table for general events, or we could leave them as separate. For now, I think we'll leave them as separate as I think they are different enough events to not need to combine them. Another event during a match is a card, such as a red or a yellow card. This is different to a goal and a substitution. We'll capture this in a new table. We have the match and player that the card relates to, and then the minute during the match that it happened. We only have two different types of cards, a red or a yellow. We can capture this using the is red card boolean column, so it is set to true for red cards and false for yellow cards. That covers everything we need for our lineup page. What else do we see? We have a tab called table. This shows the standings for all of the teams in the group that these teams are a part of. For this list, we already capture the group name and the team name and how they are related. We can calculate the played, won, draw, lost, goals for, goals against, and goal difference all from the match table. The points column can be calculated from business logic based on whatever rules we have for the tournament. The form is also calculated based on existing match data. So we have all we need for this tab. The related matches tab has a list of other matches in the tournament in other groups. We already capture the data we need for this tab as well. So what's next? We'll click on the Knockout and Groups tab at the top of the screen here. At the top we see the Knockout stage of the tournament. Below this we see the Groups. This is a common concept in tournaments. First we have the Group stage, and then the best teams progress to the Knockout stage. We've already captured the concept of a group in our database. What about the Knockout section? In this section, we can assume that the application will populate the teams into these knockout matches based on the group standings. We've already built the group tables. We haven't yet captured the concept of these stages. We have the group stage, but we need to capture the stages in the knockout, such as round of 16 or quarterfinal. To do this, we can add a lookup table for stage, then link it to each match. We have an ID and a name, like most lookup tables. However, we also have this order number column. This will define the order that the stage happens in. This can be helpful to help display the data on this page, so the web page knows that the group is stage 1, then round of 16, then quarter final. Next, we can link this to the match. We add a foreign key into the match table. Now we should have everything we need for the knockout section. We should be able to capture what we need all the way up to the final where the winner is determined. 
So how does this all fit together? At this point, we've got all the key pieces. A match brings together two teams at a stadium, during a tournament, and in a specific stage. Players are connected to teams. During a match, we capture goals, cards, and substitutions. With this structure, we can easily show all matches from a tournament. We can also see more detailed analysis, such as every goal a player scored, or see all yellow cards in the semi-final stage, or find which team used the most substitutions. If you want to use this database for your own project, or just want the full diagram and descriptions, grab the free World Cup Database Design Project Guide. The link is in the description. And if you want to learn how to create designs like this from scratch, based on real requirements, check out my Effective Database Design course. The link is also in the description. This design is solid for a Sports World Cup, but it's also expandable. You could add referees, match officials, referee review decisions, team coaches, or even ticket sales and attendance if needed. You can add multiple tournaments, such as for the next World Cup in 2026. This could be done by adding a tournament table and then linking other tables to it. You could also allow different teams from the same country, such as the Women's Football World Cup. We may need to separate teams from countries. The design we created allows for the features we saw on the World Cup website, and it's a clean, normalised design that can scale. If you enjoyed this, you'll want to watch this video next, where I design a database for Spotify, the music streaming service. Thanks for watching.